So in this video, I'm taking you through a day in the life as a junior doctor, but two things before we start. Firstly, this was filmed many, many months ago over the course of several days, way before the whole coronavirus COVID stuff started. So we're not wearing masks, there's no social distancing. And secondly, I'm talking about patients, but the patients that I'm talking about are not real. They are aggregate patients, i.e. sort of, I've made up what a representative patient sort of looks like in each of these different scenarios, which tends to be how most medical journalists and writers and stuff deal with patient confidentiality, but also talking about patients. They're not real patients, they're made up, but they're sort of representative. So with those two caveats out of the way, I hope you enjoy this video. Hey friends, welcome back to the vlog. In this video, I'll take you through a day in my life as a junior doctor on the gynecology rotation at West Suffolk Hospital in the east of England. The day begins at 6.30 a.m. when I wake up, shower, brush my teeth, do a wee and get dressed. At 7 a.m. I drive to work and I usually grab a cheeky oat milk latte from Starbucks en route. I get in at 8 a.m. and change into my scrubs with my favorite pair of bright orange trainers. And then at 8.05 we start our obstetrics handover where the midwives, obstetricians and anesthetists discuss the ladies that we've got in the labor suite. This is not overly relevant to me today because I'm on call for gynecology, but I'll talk more about this in a future video about life on call for obstetrics. At 8.15, we get a handover from the gynecology night team about any patients that we need to see. Okay, so we've just had the handover and we've been told about two ladies that we have to see. Firstly, we've got a lady who was admitted with hyperemesis gravidarum, which means severe nausea and vomiting in pregnancy. And we've also got a lady who came in overnight with an ectopic pregnancy. So that means a pregnancy growing in one of the fallopian tubes rather than in the uterus where it should be growing. And she's just about to go to the operating theater for a laparoscopy, which means the surgeons are gonna put a little camera in her abdomen and probably gonna remove uh, the tube where the ectopic pregnancy is is growing. At 8.30, having had the handover from the night team, me, the registrar or resident if you're American, and the consultant or attending if you're American, we all head over to the gynecology ward to see our patients on the ward round. The ward round itself involves seeing the patients in their beds, finding out how they've been overnight and how they're progressing, and having a look at their blood results and observations or vital signs to make sure everything's all right. Our lady with the ectopic pregnancy is just about to be taken to theatre for her operation, and so we say hello to her and wish her the very best for that. As the SHO or senior house officer on the ward, it's usually my job to type up the notes as we're going around and seeing the patients. And thankfully, the 10 hours a day that I've spent since the age of five sitting in front of a computer has really trained me up for this moment. And so I managed to keep up with typing the notes as the consultant or registrar are speaking to the patient. And at this point, if there's anything I don't understand about the patient's diagnosis, investigations, management, anything like that, uh, I just ask the consultant or registrar a question after we've seen the patient, and they're usually very happy to explain things as we go along. We finish seeing the three patients on the ward round by around 9am, when the consultant and the registrar leave to go to the labour ward to deal with the obstetric side of things. That leaves me manning the gynaecology ward along with our team of wonderful nurses and healthcare assistants. For the rest of the day, my job is to deal with any queries that arise on the ward, and to see patients who've come in for a gynaecology review via the emergency department or via their general practitioner. So, it is 10am and I've just got the first bleep from one of my colleagues in the emergency department on our secure messaging app thingy. Uh, he's just seen a lady in A&E, she's 21 years old and she's about eight weeks pregnant and she's gone to A&E because she's got some groin pain, so pain in the left iliac fossa, and also some bright red vaginal bleeding. Now the guys at A&E are worried that she might possibly have an ectopic pregnancy and so they've put in a cannula, they've sent off for some bloods and now they're gonna send her up to the gynecology ward where we're gonna review her. When she arrives here, the nurses check her vital signs to make sure she's stable and then I see her in our clinic room. I take a history to confirm what symptoms she's getting and assess for any risk factors for ectopic pregnancy. And then with her consent and one of the nurses as a chaperone, I examine her abdomen to see if there's any tenderness in any particular area and then look inside the vagina with a speculum to check for any signs of bleeding at the neck of the womb. All that seems very healthy and normal with no signs of active bleeding. And so the next step is to get her an ultrasound scan to check how baby's doing and whether baby is growing in the right place. So she's just had the ultrasound and thankfully it's confirmed a viable intrauterine pregnancy, which means a pregnancy is growing inside the womb. And so from our point of view, that's pretty reassuring. It's not an ectopic pregnancy and we can send her home with a bit of reassurance. Uh, and if she does have the pain or bleeding again, then she can always come back and we can reassess her. After seeing this lady, I document everything on our computer system. And just as I finish doing that, I get a call from a GP wanting some advice. So I've just gotten off the phone with a GP uh, who wanted some advice about a lady that he's worried about. And this lady's got pain in the right iliac fossa, so the right groin. And also she's had some nausea and a bit of vomiting over the last few days. And especially because this lady already has a known right ovarian cyst. So she's got a cyst, a benign cyst growing on her right ovary. The GP is worried that maybe she's got ovarian torsion, which is when the ovary sort of twists in on itself 
and that can be really painful, it can cause nausea and vomiting. And that can also be quite dangerous as if the blood supply to the ovary completely disappears, then the ovary can die and necrose and that would be a bad thing. So I've asked the GP to send her into the emergency department as soon as possible. And then the guys and girls in ED are gonna stabilize her, make sure she's fine, do some bloods, exclude possible appendicitis because it could be inflammation of the appendix that's causing this. Uh, but most likely she's gonna end up getting a gynae team review. While waiting for this lady to arrive, the registrar and I grab a quick coffee in the hospital's amazing restaurant, Time Out. All right, so here we are in Time Out. Time Out is the hospital's restaurant and of all the hospitals I've ever worked in, it's probably the nicest restaurant because it's very reasonably priced. There's always a load of stuff going on. The scones in this hospital are actually probably the best in the region. Apparently people come in like around Christmas time just for the scones and the mince pies and like the hospitals like Kitchens is famous for the, the scones and the mince pies, so it's a great place to hang out. And at the moment, uh, I'm just sitting with two of the registrars because we've got a bit of time this morning, just having a little catch up uh, and talking about the patients that we're going to see for the rest of the day. Afterwards, I managed to get Subhadeep on camera to talk about what his role is as the registrar or resident on call. Hi, uh, my name's Subhadeep Roy. I'm, I'm the uh, registrar on call today at the West Suffolk Hospital for Obstetrics and Gynaecology. So, in terms of who does what work, so gynaecology patients tend to be referred to the SHO on call, so they will generally see them, um, uh, examine them, uh, sort of form a sort of differential diagnosis, and then in most cases discuss their impression and plan with the registrar on call. And the days are unpredictable, yes. Uh, so anything really in obstetrics and gynaecology, particularly the obstetric side, uh, the workload can be uh, unpredictable and sudden. But the West Suffolk being uh, one of the smaller units in the region, generally the workload is quite manageable. So it's also a tight-knit, friendly unit. There's plenty of opportunity to um, uh, to learn. Consultants are very keen to get trainees uh, involved and, uh, and and into sort of hands-on work. Um, so overall, the sort of, sort of place I'd recommend for uh, for a sort of middle grade obstetrics and gynaecology trainee and indeed for any, any other grade of junior doctor. At 1pm, we get a teaching session from one of the senior doctors about maternal sepsis and the signs and symptoms that we should look out for in the postnatal period, i.e. up to a few weeks after a woman's given birth, and that's super helpful. And then after lunch, I'm back on the ward. The lady who the GP sent to A&E with possible ovarian torsion turned out to actually have appendicitis instead, and she's been taken care of by the general surgery team. After dealing with a couple of more inquiries from GPs and accepting a referral from A&E, one of the midwives in our early pregnancy assessment unit tells me about a lady she's just seen who's unfortunately had a miscarriage confirmed on ultrasound. So we've got a few different options for managing miscarriages. We've got firstly expectant management, which involves waiting for the baby to pass naturally. Or we can do medical management, which involves giving a tablet that encourages the uterus to contract and expel out any uh, pregnancy tissue that's left behind. Or the women can opt for surgical management, which involves passing a suction catheter into the uterus under a general anesthetic and removing the pregnancy tissue that way. I explained the risks and benefits of these options and the lady opts for medical management. So after talking about that in more detail, she signs a consent form and we arrange for her to have the tablets on the ward. Chasing the results of the swabs doesn't take too long, and so today I end up having around half an hour to spare at the end of the day. So it's now about 4pm and we've seen all the patients have come in via GP and A&E and we don't have anyone waiting in the waiting room to be seen. And that means that now is a good time to chase up any results of investigations that we've requested over the last few days. So often if ladies come in with vaginal discharge or any symptoms of infection, uh, we'll take some swabs using a speculum and then we'll send those swabs off to the lab to be grown and analyzed. And we've got this little book that we write all of these outstanding investigations in and every day we have a look through and see if any results are back yet. And so if someone does have an infection growing on one of the swabs, we can give them a call and say, hey, um, you know, I'm Ali, I'm calling from the gynecology ward. You had some swabs taken. Uh, we've seen that those swabs have grown E. coli and so we can give you some antibiotics for that and we'd offer for them to come into hospital to have the antibiotics here or we can write to their GP and they can just grab the antibiotics from their general practice if that's easier for them. I check in with the obstetrics on call team to make sure they're all right and then I sit down and get some extra work done. Each week I run physiology supervisions for first year medical students so if I've got time on a given day I can try and find the time to sit down with my iPad and a cup of coffee to read through the lecture notes which is quite nice. So it's 5 p.m. now it's already dark outside and that is the end of of my gynecology on call shift because we do those from eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the evening. And if there's anything to hand over, like any patients left to see or anything left to chase up, uh, I hand that over to the obstetrics on call doctor who is on from eight in the morning till 9 p.m. at night. And so that was a day in the life uh, as a gynecology junior doctor on call at West Suffolk Hospital. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. I'll put a playlist there of some more day in the life sort of videos if you like. And I'll put a link in the video description to the West Suffolk website. Uh, if you fancy a career uh, in any kind of healthcare specialty, then West Suffolk is a great place to do it. So yeah, huge thanks to West Suffolk Hospital for being kind enough to let me film on site. 
Uh, hope you found that video making it interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.